Hopefully you are all doing great. Yeah, bad math is just one minute connection. Oh, okay. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> Greetings all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I'm so glad to be with you again uh, globally with a new workshop uh, titled Learning Whole Brain Styles. First of all, let me introduce you or refresh your minds with me again. I am Leal Haddad. Uh, I am an, an educational trainer and I've been in uh, educational field since 2008. So I would like today to discuss a very important uh, strategy or technique, which is called whole brains teaching. And it is really effective teaching and it enhances our class. First of all, to start with the title. When, I, when you read the title, learning whole brain style, okay? Directly what comes to your mind? Why do you think I separated the word learning and style uh, apart? And I just kept the word, the, the title, whole brain between them. So can you please tell me or think of it? I would like to, I would I like to. Talk? Yeah, of course, dear. Okay. Uh, I think in the uh, learning, uh, learning whole brain side, so we know that uh, lear uh, there are different types of uh, learning. Uh, so I think that uh, this is related to one of them or it's going to be integrated in any of them. We have the four learning styles and maybe because it's whole brain, يعني, you're going to be a uh, brain innovation, let me say here over here, يعني, you're going to work on the brain of the students, all of the students maybe or uh, I don't know, but it's nice. يعني, the title is the grabbing, it's grab my attention. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I totally agree with you, exactly. Mr. Muhammad, would you like to share anything? Mr. Muhammad, are you with us? Anyone online, live? I can see all of you. So I would like to also to, uh, to, share your, to share your ideas. Greetings all, greeting from Nigeria, greeting from India. Hello, Mexico. Greetings all. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll start our session and I hope also the one who's watching live would also participate with us. So let's start with. So if you want to know more about me, this is uh, my QR code. You can just scan it and check my portfolio. Today, we're going to discuss the following objectives. First of all, we'll identify whole brain strategy, we'll determine the four learning styles, engage the four learning styles in the whole brain teaching, demonstrate the core components of whole brain teaching, create activities that incorporate whole brain teaching principles and address various learning styles. So I guess from the objectives, you'll see that we have a lot of things to do together. Of course, the target group are teachers, coordinators, educators, students, and anyone who would like to benefit from this workshop today. So to begin with, this is a word quest. I would like you to just have a look on this word quest, try to find out words that you think can work or can uh, just belong to classroom atmosphere by writing it on your chat, on the chat icon, or I can see that uh, the participants that are watching us live. Also, I would like you to share with us by seeing this word quest. Exactly, thank you, Mr. Hani. So we have uh, one of, the, one of uh, our participants here, busy, safe, adaptation, okay. So also the one who's watching us live, I would like to see one of your, I would like to see your participation, please. Okay, active. Thank you. Exactly. Very good. Exactly. Uh, Mr. Muhammad, are you with us? Engage. Exactly. Yes. These are words. Okay. What else? Anything else?
Great, great, great. Thank you, Mr. Hani. Thank you a lot. Mr. Muhammad, are you with us? Yes, I'm sharing. Uh, okay, yeah, but I, I can hear you. If you want to participate with us, just you can type. You can join us. Share. Thank you, Mr. Hani. Creative. Thank you. Okay. And the one who's live, please try also to join us. Safe. Exactly, Mr. Hamma. Thank you. So what we have mentioned now are words adapt. Wow, this is very important, what you have just said. This is what uh, the, the, the core of our workshop is to adapt, to satisfy the learning styles of our students inside the class. So what you have just all mentioned are uh, totally uh, great. Exactly, this is the atmosphere of a class or the things that we usually see in our class. Now, introduction. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hani. <laughs> okay, introduction. So we'll come to our presentation, as I said, and I would like to just briefly say what is whole brain, just to have an idea because you're going also to uh, find out this during our workshop. So whole brain teaching is uh, a method okay, that takes into uh, consideration all the learning styles. And we usually use this strategy to engage all four parts of our brain. So again, whole brain teaching is a teaching method strategy, just like any strategy, but this strategy is really uh, different, unique, and uh, it uh, usually students, when I use it, enjoy it a lot, enjoy the session. They wait, they wait a lot in order to just join their class, just to start our session using the strategies of whole brain teaching. So as I said, it is because it satisfies the different learning styles. And of course, it engages all the four parts of the brain. This is very important to take into consideration why this strategy is really important to be applied in our classrooms. So, so this is the introduction or what is exactly whole brain teaching. So it creates a dynamic and interactive classroom using a range of uh, strategies such as movement, hands-on activities, students uh, like to move, repetition in a very collaborative, collaborative way, uh, students also can uh, uh, participate effectively in the class, and you can you do, you will not find audience in your classroom using this strategy. So you'll see how and you'll see the way this this strategy works with all the students. So yes, Tahani, I saw that so you raised your hand. You're, you're also working. It means that you're also working on the psychomotor skills and the affective domain. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Exactly. True. Exactly. Okay, so this is uh, for if you want to, or if you think you're a visual learner, or you want to just discover what your learning style is, I will share this, okay, at the end of the session, I will share this link, just to test your learning style, okay, you can see which kind of uh, learner you are. Uh, we have different learning styles. So through this test or through through this uh, activity, you'll know which learner you are and uh, what, what do you prefer to learn from or through. So what are the four learning styles? Can you tell me, please? What do you know about the four learning styles? So the one also who are uh, watching us live, I can see all your comments, please. I would like you also to participate with us. Yes, uh, so yeah, exactly. We have visual, we have auditory, kinesthetic, and good evening, good evening all. Read and write, reading and writing, exactly. Thank you, Mr. Hani, yes, that's right. So these are the four learning styles. We have the visual learner, auditory learner, reading, writing learner, and the kinesthetic learner. To start with, I am, oh, 
<laughs> okay, great. <laughs> that's that's creative, by the way. <laughs> You're from the other planet. <laughs> okay, so visual learner. What do you know about visual learner? From the word visual, what comes to your mind directly? When you read the visual learners, usually through what do, they, do these learners uh, uh, learn or go through? Understand the concept. What I see exactly, Mr. Muhammad, thank you. Videos, wait, PowerPoint, yes. Thank you, DM, Mr. Hani and Mr. Muhammad for your active participation. Okay, related to eyes, that's true. So such learners, as you all say, uh, that uh, it is uh, visual learner are learners that usually learn through charts, pictures, everything related to their eyes, everything related to their vision. So it's very important to take into consideration such a learner because such a learner uh, really matters for him or her to at least just pass the in, in visual things inside the class, just to make them interested, to make them engage them, to make them understand the, the concept better and so on. So visual learners learn through visual helps such as charts, pictures, videos. We can take them also to, uh, to uh, uh, for example, if you want to go on a field trip and you want them to observe things there, it's also very useful. And they benefit from seeing uh, data displayed in a visual organized way because it makes a difference for them to remember and understand the concept better. Okay, what do you think the next learner is? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mr. Hani. Thank you. Okay, so what do you think the second learner or the learning style? Before I uh, move to a new slide, you're grabbing their ad. Exactly, exactly, Mr. Hani. Yes. Whenever you're engaging them, whenever you just present anything that really they find interesting using their eyes. Exactly. So I would like also, again, I'm repeating it so you would all participate with me. Uh, the one who's watching us live. Really, it will be an honor to see you all participating as well. So the second, uh, the second uh, learning style is the auditory. Okay, auditory learner. What do you think about auditory learner? Yes, I think you're gonna be <laughs> exactly in ears exactly. So auditory learners are learners who learn best when listening, when they hear you. Okay, this is the, their, their own way in learning things, in uh, understanding the concept or the content, in uh, just uh, inter uh, interacting with you in the class or uh, engaging uh, with, uh, with different uh, activities. So also we have to take into consideration such learners. Exactly, Mr. Muhammad. Yes, I understand for, from what I listen. Exactly. So as I said, they are learners who use who use learners who use their ears in order to understand. This is their own way in learning. They involve themselves in discussions, in lectures, and they benefit a lot from reading and discussing concepts. They really, they are very good listeners, really. So we have also to be careful for such learners to try to satisfy them during our uh, session in a way uh, that, uh, uh, engaging them in discussions and uh, in asking questions so to know if they are really uh, enjoying uh, the session in this way. So now we have an activity to do together. Turn. So dear participants, dear all who's watching us here live all over the worldwide, I would like you to create your own activity related to your teaching field, trying to satisfy the visual and auditory learner. So I'll give you two minutes or three minutes if you want, okay? Try to now create your own activity, trying to satisfy both learners in one activity. So waiting for your answers, take your time. Don't worry. You mean the same activity? 
but we have to yeah. do it in different ways, one for the auditory and one for the visual? No, no, one activity that satisfies both visual and audi uh, auditory. Okay. Okay. So take your time, think of it, and I'm ready to listen to you, or if you want to type. So also the one who's commenting, waiting for your answers. Hello from Georgia. Georgia, sorry. They don't need, okay, uh -huh, there's Rita. They do not need to have visual content to learn. Exactly, Rita, thank you. Auditory use, sense hearing, exactly. Uh, I, I, uh, Isaiah, yes. A video, thank you, Rita. Thank you for participating. This is really great. Yes. Okay, yeah, let me see here. So, okay, Mr. Muhammad is saying, in science, I can show them a silent video about needs of plants, and I will be commenting on the video. Okay, and what's the purpose? Uh, we have to set a purpose uh, by uh, while watching this video. So, what's the purpose from this video, Mr. Muhammad? You can type if you if you if you have a technical problem with your speaker. Can you listen to me? Yes. So it's about just uh, showing them uh, the needs of the plants that's the per the main purpose but in, in a narrating way that's why i want to uh -huh. uh, okay. to be talking not uh, and i don't want the uh, youtube to be explaining the video i want to explain it in my way uh, exciting okay. way for those who only uh, depend on the uh, second uh, or listening uh, skill Exactly. So you engage both uh, learning styles, which is the visual by watching the video and commenting on the video by telling what are the needs of plants. So here you're also satisfying the auditory learner. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. Very nice. Thank you. Or you I can simply record uh, your voice on the video, Mr. Muhammad. Yeah, you can do this. Also, it will be creative. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Sorry, Mr. Hani is saying. To the question. I was telling you that you can even record your voice uh, on uh, record the, your voice on the video that you're gonna be presenting for the students. So the comments that you're gonna be hearing are gonna be inside the video. Or you think it's gonna be more interesting for them if uh, you do the comments uh, live? Uh, yeah, uh, I think that uh, doing the comments live will be more interesting for the students. By that. Um, for for the, for students who can depends on visual uh, mm. can see as well my uh, body language uh, which will be uh, affecting with what they are watching and the concerning the needs of plants. Look, I agree with you, but uh, if you record your voice. Uh, within the video, I think it's going to be more interesting for them because they're going to be hearing you from the YouTube video, which they usually hear from different people they don't know. Exactly. exactly. I don't know. I, 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 I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, uh, I'm, I'm, I gave this uh, idea just because of one reason. Um, some students, they don't accept to listen to uh, other than their, their teachers. That's why. So I have wow. faced it a uh, few days ago uh, mm. where some students uh, used to tell me uh, during the session, um, can you please re-explain or retell the story in your own way? Mm. And I was showing them the same video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, Mr. Hani is saying, sing a song with them related to multiplication table and die, and then apply visually. Very nice, creative also. Yeah, and it satisfies uh, satisfy, uh, satisfies both learning styles. Exactly. So here also we have uh, uh, Anita, Miss Anita, uh, have students uh, watch a clock and listen for the sounds of each second to see how long a minute really feels. Wow, this is nice. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, uh, as I was saying, some lessons use uh, multi-sensory learning. Yeah, that's true. Hello, Mai, hi. Okay, so thank you all for uh, participating. I really liked your, the way you, um, you created this activity, uh, satisfying both learning styles. So it is very important to try with one activity to satisfy both learning styles. And now we're going to move on in order to try create activities in order to satisfy the four learning styles in just one activity. Ready? <laughs> okay, greetings, greetings, Aizu. Okay, so this, the third learning style is reading, writing. Reading, writing are learners who can learn through written words, reading, they like to read. They enjoy writing notes or summarize uh, events or even identify main ideas and support them with details or by paraphrasing things. This is the way, this is the way they really feel uh, fine by learning. This is the way they understand. This is the way they are uh, engaged. And this is the way they try to uh, mem memorize the, the things that they have uh, taken uh, during the session. So, uh, and uh, of course, when they want to summarize, they will not summarize the whole lesson. They will summarize just the essential points that it was that was given uh, during the learning process. And the final one or the last one is, yes, uh, there is, uh, it, uh, it's also me if I don't create mind mapping exactly for data I'm studying and linking them together, I really do not memorize exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I totally agree with you, Mr. Hani. Of course, you are, you are one of the learners that have all the, the styles. Thank you. So, kinesthetic learner from the picture. What comes to your mind when you see such a picture uh, for such learner? Yes. Yeah. Motor, motor skills, exactly, movement, yeah. They like to move, they like to touch, they like to feel things, they like just to psychomotor, exactly. Exactly, Mr. Hani, this is what I was just going to say. Okay, Azaya is saying here, reading comprehension skill used and right style, exactly. Uh, Rita is saying uh, kinesthetic action, yes, students who like to move, that's right. Hands-on activities. So. Such learners are very important to just ask them to move inside the class. Probably you can make a very quick uh, activity outside the class just to satisfy them. And usually nowadays we can see that such learners are, uh, are becoming, uh, uh, are becoming uh, more than any other learners, right? We have a lot of learners who uh, just enjoy moving around or going outside the class to, to learn, by the way, but in a, in a, in a very uh, effective way, in a very engaging way. So such learners uh, benefit from exercises that include role playing, experiments, touch materials, and hands-on activities. Now, now, we're going now to another activity here which is sorting, sorting the following, sort the following activities according to four learning styles. Yes, uh, Tahani, Mr. Tahani, they are applying using their hands. This is uh, a non-ending memory, exactly. Exactly, yes, long-term memory, long-term memory. Such learners have long-term memory, yes, that's right. Okay, now, so let's see here, kinesthetic use movements and doing tactile touching, learn the names of things by touching the real objects too, to learning by doing. Exactly, Rita, Azaya, and Mai, thank you. So now I want you to, I have here different activities. I try to translate them to Arabic probably if uh, we have um, Arabs uh, or Arabic uh, fields or teachers who teach, uh, teach uh, Arabic. So. Probably it can benefit you in this way, can benefit you. Uh, design a presentation that captures the main points. This presentation, brainstorm the importance of smartphones, 
Okay, sorry, I just need to put this up. Okay, guess the vocabulary words using pictures and create a respiratory system using different materials. So please, we have to sort these activities according to the four learning styles you have uh, up. Okay, everyone to its correct heading. So take your time in reading them again and I'm waiting for your uh, answers. So, Here, Rita is saying when you write, you activate both the brain hemispheres. Okay, next time, can you write only in English? Uh, sure, my sure, but uh, it's also very beneficial also to, uh, so everyone would uh, also share, okay? Uh, so let's see here. Mr. Hani is saying, e, I will not say now the answers uh, after, unless you all uh, participate. So my, uh, they are written in English. You can uh, you can participate. Okay, just don't look on the Arabic uh, uh, words. <laughs> okay, so E is kinesthetic. Okay, D visual. Okay, I'm waiting for all your participating. So take your time. B is auditory. Okay. Take your time. Wait. Can I? Yeah. Yeah, Hamad. Okay, so while designing a presentation, it means I'm using my reading writing uh, skills. Exactly. Uh, while discussing a presentation, so uh, here I'm uh, auditory, mm -hmm. um, brainstorm uh, the importance of smartphones. Um, it could be uh, visual and auditory at the same time. Okay, brainstorm. Okay, you can... Uh, how, how can if there is explain? visual... Uh, um, if there is something visual or presentation or PowerPoint, so it could be visual and uh -huh. auditory at the same time. Not, Wait. so I, I think that uh, uh, auditory. Okay. Uh, D, uh, guessing the vocabulary words using pictures, it's, uh, um, uh, it's uh, for sure visual. And E, creating a respiratory system, it's uh, kinesthetic. Okay. So Mr. Tahani is saying D is uh, visual, B, auditory, uh, C, reading, writing, and uh, sorry, I couldn't see up. Can I comment? Yeah, sure. My answers are uh, the same, uh, the ones that Mr. Muhammad said, but I think the number, the part C is different. Uh, I thought of it in a different way. When you're brainstorming the importance okay, of the tricky, smartphones, right? if you're using an application, let's say, or write, or maybe, it, for example. Like, but I go more with the idea of uh, maybe, uh, maybe it is the auditory if you're talking, or and I go more with the idea of writing because when we are brainstorming, you are using, we are typing on the keyboard or we are writing on the paper in front of us because we're gathering the information in one, uh, let's say, uh, like like mind mapping. So I don't know, Anna, I go more with the idea that brainstorm is uh, the read and write side. Okay. Uh, by the way, both are correct. Both can work. Brainstorming uh, can be for reading and writing uh, a learner. And also, as Mr. Muhammad said, if it is visual, Okay, also visual learners can benefit from it, can also understand. Uh, also auditory learners while discussing the importance of smartphones, even while, after they finish brainstorming. So it, it works, it works. Yeah, yeah, but here we understand. have to adapt things in order to work. So yes, just- It depends on the method that you're using. Exactly, in exactly. I totally agree with you, yes, exactly. So brainstorming here, uh, it depends if you're going to make it visual or just uh, students are going to do it uh, on a piece of paper or on their notebooks. So it differs. 
And uh, according to you, the... or maybe if they are doing a group work and brainstorming as any group or uh, think th uh, think and uh, uh, and share ideas. So here it's auditory. Exactly, exactly. Thank you a lot. Thank you a lot, Mr. Muhammad and Mr. Hani. We have here also, uh, uh, as I uh, the, the language is beyond me. I only understand English. Okay, so Maya is saying visual is D, exactly. And uh, according to uh, auditory, she said that it is E. So create a respiratory system using different, uh, uh, think about it again, Mai, Mai because uh, here we are trying to create, okay? Create things uh, using uh, different materials. Reading, writing is A and C. Okay, it can work, okay. Uh, read time, interactive presentation, oh, thank you. Okay, uh, could be visual, auditory, and reading, writing, because they can write while writing. Okay, thank you. So let's continue. So to move on now, we're going to watch a video, okay? Let me just stop sharing and then share it again, because I need to open the video in a new window. Okay, we're going to watch a video and I want you while watching this video to tell me what's okay, uh, what impact or what's the positive impact it will be uh, on, uh, on the students. Okay, sorry, one minute. So, oh, I didn't open it, okay, wait. <laughs> Let me open it first. Here it is. I asked so just watch the students, how they are all engaged, how they are all together working, okay? No shy student, no audience, and no one is just being busy with his stuff, pencil case and whatever. I don't know what happened. Okay, now it's fine. Please watch, and I'm waiting for your positive impacts. Said close behind him, William escorted his master into one of the best carriages of all the of the train and reached his own just as the train pulled out. I'm traveling with my master's in another carriage. I I think you better get him out and be quick about it, because the train will soon be starting. Yeah. The officer ordered, it is against the rules to let a man take uh, take his leg past there. Whenever she starts to play, I was afraid she feared that William could have been kidnapped and she was sleeping or perhaps killed. Next, I tell them to occasionally ask each other questions teach each other about what they've read. Into the be still. Kids are learning a lot in this game. Step one reading dramatically. Okay, so after watching this video this amazing video, really. I really enjoy watching this video every single time I repeat, seriously. So uh, first of all, this, uh, this kind of uh, strategy is called the crazy professor, okay? 
It is, uh, it is one of the strategies it is used in, um, in reading. So to keep all the students engaged and just don't let students wait until they, uh, they finish, uh, for example, take turns in, uh, in reading uh, the paragraph or whatever they want to read. So to start with, what do you think? What's the positive things you have seen in this video? Let's see. So what are the positive impacts? What's the positive things uh, about, uh, about uh, applying this uh, crazy professor strategy in reading comprehension? So also the one who's online, I would like you to, someone who's, uh, I mean, uh, live on Facebook or whatever. Okay, I like the name of the video. <laughs> yeah, crazy professor, <laughs> exactly. All are busy sharing and working. Exactly, all are reading. This is the most, uh, this is the main, uh, uh, the main uh, purpose from this uh, strategy, to let them all read. The teacher will, will really need a panadol. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because of the noise probably. <laughs> Okay, now we have well, we have strategies to to just uh, try to increase decrease this kind of noise, uh, especially using the crazy or applying crazy professor. Yeah. So as you said, uh, Mr. Hani, Mr. Muhammad, do you have something to comment or say, Mr. Muhammad? Okay. The one who's watching us also. Okay, so according to this video, we have different benefits. First of all, as you all said, it alters different learning methods, enhances important life skills, retiring per learning, which is very important, enhances important life skills, creates effective learning, engages all the students. This is also a very important part to take into consideration that through reading comprehension, students are not just waiting for their turn in order to read. They are all reading in a very amazing way. They are bringing words into life. They are living the words. They are just pretending that they are the characters in the story and trying to act them out in a way that they feel fine with it or comfort with it. So satisfies the four learning styles. When I ask my, the students to ask questions, to uh, comprehension questions or things related to, their, to what they have read, when I ask them to use their uh, gestures in order to read dramatically, okay? Uh, how the, can the teacher hear and assess them? Uh, so, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna speak about this one minute. So it is really amazing way to have students just be engaged in the reading session during the reading comprehension session. According to assessing, of course, during assessing, the teacher is not going to stand just back beside the board and watch them. She has to monitor them by moving around them, by checking what they're reading. Probably she would stand beside it, but beside the pair of students who are, uh, um, for example, reading and uh, take uh, observation or assessing their the reading in a way that they don't even just panic of it. Okay, when whenever you say whenever you say to your students that you're going to we're going to assess your reading today, you'll feel that whenever they read. Their voices started to shake and they feel so frightened, even their hands. I really feel bad when I see such students. So why should I put my student in, into this situation? Why I don't, don't just make him enjoy reading, make this reading just go into life and at the same time assess him in a very, uh, very um, uh, fun way and a very, uh, just not, uh, not to let him feel it, okay? By the way, he will get a very good grade. Don't, don't just even think, I, I really experienced this before with my students. They will get amazing grades while you are assess or observe your students reading in this way with their partners or with their uh, peers. Yes, thank you, Mr. Hani. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> so let's see here. Yes, okay. Now, 
Now we came to the key elements of whole brain class, which is very important. These are the most important key elements of whole brain class. We have the class attention or class yes. We have the mirror words. Uh, we have the direct instruction or lesson chunks and we have teach, okay, collaborative learning. Let's start one by one. First of all, class yes. When you hear such a title or a technique, what comes to your mind, please? I would like to, uh, to uh, I would like to listen to your participation. The most important is not the grade, it is the knowledge. Exactly, Ms. Rita, thank you, thank you. Exactly, this is what I was totally speaking about. It is not about the grade. I, and I have to make my students just forget a little bit about the grade, not to make them always panic about it or feel that they are, they are learning just to grade them. This is, uh, this is the most important part uh, in, learning, in the learning process. So, uh, class yes, when you read such title, what comes to your mind? What do you think? What kind of tech is this? And it is used for what? By the way, it's written. <laughs> but just if you have anything to add, I would like to uh, read or listen to you. So what comes to your mind whenever you say class yes? Yes, Mr. Hani, I just uh, I have just seen it. Talk about their interests. Okay, okay, we are now probably. How I how how am I going to speak about their interests when I say class? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So to clarify it, maybe when they know that everything's gonna be yes. Um, I will clarify it to you. Uh, class, yes, they will be engaged. This is it, exactly, exactly. What you have said, the last uh, sentence, they will be engaged is totally true. It is a technique that grabs the student's attention. A technique, a way. For example, when I apply crazy professor uh, strategy, Okay, and I want my students to come back to me. Just, I need to give them more instructions to continue the activity. I would not just shout by their calling their names and so on. No, why should I do this? I just say class, class. They will reply, yes, yes. Or I can say it class. They will say yes. Okay, or even I, there are different techniques that we can use to have the students' attention again back to us. Can you share one of the techniques that you use to grab your students' attention, please. So again, get, they get the chance to participate, exactly. Yes, who would like to share one of the techniques that can help in grabbing the, the, grabbing the students' attention back to you, especially when they are so busy in doing something? As for me, I can, for example, uh, do them uh, some exercises suddenly. <laughs> physical exercises <laughs> you will shock them yes <laughs> okay kind of this is one of the the one of the of your of your own way in grabbing the students attention okay what else let's think of something funny or something that uh, really don't let them be uh, so uh, terrified of what you're going to do next Okay, mastering their names and con okay, conformity, they get, okay, I can master their names. Okay, but what if my students are uh, 24, what if we, I have 24 students in my class? Don't you think it is a wasting of time to call everyone's name alone? It will take time, right? So what about the class? Have you ever mastered this? Yes, exactly, Mr. Hadi. I was just saying it. Thank you. Exactly. Clapping, okay, making uh, uh, clapping, make, make the clap in a way that they all just uh, listen to you and reply your clap will grab their attention as well. Clapping is very important to, uh, to be uh, also to grab the student's attention. 
You can say, you can turn off the lights, for example, turn on and off the lights several times, but don't just burn the, the, the light, okay? Also can grab their attention by putting music. You can put the music for them. They will also be silent and just try to check. You, you are trying here to enhance their, uh, enhance their curiosity, okay? Okay, uh, teach like a champion strategies. Uh, making positive comments or giving positive feedbacks. Very nice. One, two, three, eyes on me. Very nice. Yes, Ivy, uh, Isaiah, Rita, thank you. I can raise my hand. Yes, Miss Batul, exactly. Okay, yeah, just like this, for example. Or I can count using my fingers without even just uh, raising my voice. Exactly. So let's move to the second one. Call and response. Also, what comes to your mind when you read such uh, uh, such technique using teaching, of course? So, anyone would like to call a response? Usually, when do we uh, apply such a strategy? When do we apply it? I can apply it when asking students group response. Yes, or uh, I can uh, ask them uh, during a uh, learning process or for example, reading lesson, if they are uh, listening to audio, okay? Uh, and I may pause this audio in order to ask uh, referential questions just to make them understand the, uh, the, compre the reading in a creative way, in an uh, interactive way. In reading, exactly, Ms. Batul, thank you. Okay, so what is color response? It is, it, it is one of the techniques, Ivy, okay? It is one of the techniques that I use in order to engage my students to answer questions while we are in the middle of a learning process, okay? So how can, as I said, how can I engage all students while applying the color response technique? As we said, Ms. Batul is saying by uh, through reading, and, uh, and through group uh, response, exactly. Now, here I have some call response tips. We can use these tips or uh, let's say activities in order to enhance this strategy or this technique in our class. We can go around in a circle, for example, okay? Atalize mini whiteboards, which is very important. I provide my student, my, my school usually, provide uh, the students with mini whiteboards, just uh, as, uh, as, uh, as small as this, okay, with markers. And whatever, whenever I want to ask anything, instead of asking them to raise their hand, to take turns in answering, I would ask them all to write the answers on, the, on this mini whiteboards and raise them up. And you'll see how amazing the class will, will be, really, by moving around them, telling them, yes, great, well, uh, well done, you have done great, correct, okay? In this way, you're giving feedback, just quick feedbacks. You'll see that your students are flying, flying because you have just, uh, you have just given them an amazing feedback that really raises up their self-confidence, uh, feel uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, uh, comfort by uh, giving answers uh, freely without thinking of it's correct or not even. This is the important thing about uh, Cora response or whole brains teaching. Thank you. Yes, exactly, Mr. Tahani. Thank you. Thank you for being here as well. So very question types. Also, I have techniques here that I can use in order to vary uh, uh, vary the, uh, the question types, okay? And of course, it is very important to satisfy the learning styles and use scaffolding strategies. What do you mean by scaffolding strategies? Can anyone tell me? What does it mean by saying scaffolding strategies? Do you have any idea about it? Yes, Mr. Hani. Dividing objective into simple ones, exactly. Breaking down, yes, chunking, that's right. So scaffolding 
is when I divide the content into simpler ones. Why should I just ask them to read a whole page of reading instead of just dividing the reading, uh, the, the uh, sorry, the page into different paragraphs and asking them questions, keep, they keep them engaging in each to the questions or to the paragraphs that they are going to read. Yes. Uh, what is, okay, I hope I answered you, Ivy. So, teach, okay. This is a good for a differential learner as well. It's very important. Yes, this is what we have to take into consideration. Yes, that's right, uh, Mr. Hani. So teach, okay. Teach, okay, promotes peer teaching, uh, articulates thoughts and understanding, checks understanding. So peer, okay, also checks understanding. And it, of course, engages all the students. So Ms. Batul is saying here specific paragraphs reading for, for, for a purpose, exactly, by adding questions or telling them to identify my ideas. Probably I want to apply a reading comprehension skill related to the paragraph that they were going to read. Exactly, Ms. Batu, thank you for participating with us. So, as I said, Teach OK promotes peer teaching, articulates thoughts and understanding, and of course, the most important part in Teach OK is it checks understanding. And all of these engages all the students. So, some activities we have in Teach OK, JAXA technique, discussion and debate, storytelling, concept mapping, and ga uh, gamified challenging, okay? So these are also activities that we can apply during this, where this uh, phase or this technique while using whole brain strategy. Now, your turn. Choose one of the Teach OK activities. I'll go back to the slide so you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to uh, design your own uh, activity or create your own activity. OK, I want you to share one of the activities to your partner using Teach OK strategy. So I wanted you here, OK, to, I love Jigsaw. Yeah, it's very nice. I want you here, for example, Mr. Hani and Mr. Muhammad, are you with me? Mr. Tahani and Mrs. Muhammad. It's Mr. Sorry, Mrs. Tahani and Mrs. It's Mr. Muhammad. Yes, I want you. <laughs> okay. I want you now to teach each other, okay, to uh to uh, just pretend that you are both students, or even not students, you are going to uh check understanding uh for everything we have discussed so far uh about whole brain teaching listen what we're going to do for example pretend i am now the, uh, the teacher okay whenever i say teach you'll say you reply okay you start to ask questions related to what we have discussed so far about whole brain teaching okay when i say switch you again reply by saying okay and you do the same Master Muhammad, you ask tahani questions that uh, re regarding what we have discussed so far Ready? I'm ready. I don't know if he's here. Uh, Mr. Muhammad, yeah, I guess he's here. Can you go back to the, previous, uh, to the previous slide, please? So, yeah, you want me to go back? Please, to the previous slide. I just yes. want to see the... Okay, no, no, forget, forget about it. Forget about it. Let's now do this part, okay? You just have to ask. I, I already have. I already have chosen for you the, the activity. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> so I want you to just ask questions. Okay, pretend that he's uh, the one, uh, the the one that's sitting next to you, and you want to check understanding. Okay, instead of taking this, or the teacher takes this part, why don't students also take this part? Okay, by saying, for example, the teacher says, "Or oh, teach." The students will reply by saying, okay, and they will ask each other uh, the um, uh, questions related to what uh, the teacher was discussing or to what they have learned so far. And I want you to do the same now by discussing things or asking questions about things. Uh, let me just be specific learning styles, okay? Okay. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I don't know if he's in here. Are you here? Mr. Mr. Muhammad, are you there? Mr. Muhammad? He just appeared every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Thank you, Maja. Thank you, Rita. 
So he's not here. Okay. But my aim here is to uh, try to act here in front of everyone. Okay. Yeah. It's I know, okay. I'm, you're doing like role, uh, role play. Uh, you know what? Uh, let me do it with you. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna go, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Can you, can you tell me what did you understand about the foreign learning side? About, sorry, I didn't hear you. Tell me, what did you understand about the foreign learning style? Okay, that every student has his own style in learning and in understanding the concept. Switch. Ah, okay. okay, switch. Your turn. Switch. Whenever the teacher okay. says switch, say switch. Say, we have okay. to. It's my turn okay. to ask you now. <laughs> yeah, I'll ask you. Okay. Um, uh, what is, um, what is, uh, how can, uh, how can you grab the student's attention when they are in the middle, busy in the middle of applying an activity? Clap one. Clap uh, one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, look at you. <laughs> so this is one of the strategies that we can use with students to check understanding. Okay. Yeah, Instead true. of, uh, yes, yeah, it's really fun. Information on their own way. No? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. They will not be shy from you by by waiting, uh, by uh, just being so uh, afraid if they answer, if they're going to answer in a wrong way. They will just be free in answering the, their uh, their uh, friends. And at the same time, their friends are responsible to correct their answers if it's correct or not. Okay. And after I finish this part, I want to check if they have really applied it in a way, uh, asking questions related to everything we have discussed. So I start to ask students, what did you ask your friends about? They start to, uh, to, to just tell me questions here and there. And in this way, I will, be, I will make sure that my students really ask questions related to the content and they were very important questions, okay? Okay, so as a, uh, uh, I, as a uh, excellent, thank you, thank you. Uh, being friendly with your learners, yes. Following questions, thank you. So, okay. So I guide the questions, exactly. You can write them, by the way. If you find that your students are not able to ask, sometimes students don't have this, uh, this kind of uh, way to ask uh, their, uh, their friends. Okay, we can just type, uh, we can write on the, on, the, on the board some questions to them and ask them to choose uh, the question they want to ask their friends and play this game by saying teach, okay, switch, okay. Got it? Okay. Now, mirroring. When you read the word mirroring, what comes to your mind also? Mirroring. Yes, Mr. Hani. Copying me. Yeah, totally true. Exactly. Okay, how should I ask my students to repeat what I have said? So mirroring is a technique or a powerful technique that involves students to repeat back what the teacher says or does. So it is very important to know if my students really uh, uh, understood what uh, I have uh, explained with them, the activities we have discussed together and everything. So we have many of them, many ways in order to apply the mirroring uh, strategy. We have our own way, but I cannot just ask my student to stand up and tell him, repeat what I have said, please. This is totally um, embarrassing. Yeah, he'll be shy. He'll be uh, afraid and so on. Why should I put my, my student into such a uh, situation in front of everyone? No, instead, I would make an activity, okay, for him or for her in a way that I can check my students uh, or I can ask my students to repeat in a creative way. So thank you, please. Take your time. You have two minutes. We don't have a lot of time. Two minutes. Think of an activity that can you create as mirroring, okay? And of course, you have to take into consideration identifying the four learning styles. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, when you create the mirroring activity, I want you to identify its learning style, okay? And try, try please to, uh, to identify the learning styles of the students while applying this, uh, this activity. So waiting for your uh, responses. Okay, Ms. Batul, exactly. Thank you, Nino. So. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> so Mr. Han is saying eight times five equal 40. She's a math teacher and a consultant coordinator and also an educational trainer as well. Repeat all auditory. I'm jumping, jump all. Wow, this is nice. Creative. Exactly. So here you satisfied the auditory learner and by jumping, you're satisfying the kinesthetic learner. Exactly. Thank you. Great. Great idea. Okay. So this is according to mentoring. We have also some tips and some techniques related. We have the charades. Okay, I can ask my students to role play something related to what we have learned. A story, for example, or an event that really impressed you. I can ask this student to role play this event or a main idea, for example. I want, I want to ask my students again about the main idea. I can also ask students to act out the main idea and other students have to guess this, the main idea or the word or the thing that uh, he's acting in using the many whiteboards that I have just told you about. So mirror storytelling also by retelling the story, expressions, challenge, challenging is very important part when uh, to, to be applied uh, in our classes. I'm jumping five times, now your turn, so they count. Wow, this is creative, Mr. Hani, thank you. Exactly. Okay, hands and eyes. Also, this is technique involves using hands, gestures, and eye contact to communicate with students that we can use by, uh, Ms. Batul has just mentioned something about raising our hand in order to make our students just follow us or uh, to grab their attention. Also, there is another way, especially when students are uh, writing something or taking notes after they have discussed things to get with you, we can ask students to, uh, whenever they finish, usually students like to say, teacher, I have finished. Teacher finished, teacher done, teacher finished. So this is this becomes really annoying inside our class, especially when uh, when others are concentrating doing something else. So why do we have to just uh, uh, let, let them do this, okay? Instead of teaching some routines that can help uh, our class to be more organized, our classroom management to be well, uh, or, or enhances the, the classroom management to teachers by, for example, using uh, the this, this part, okay? When I say, whenever you finish, just show me the sign. They all put their pencils or pens down and show me this by saying, by putting this or doing this action, it shows that they have finished what they are writing or, or, or if they have, uh, uh, they are answering any question. Okay, Mr. Hani is still <laughs> in the mirroring part. Okay, clap once means, Give me your test, clap three times. It means I'm, oh, okay, okay, your hands and eyes. No, sorry, sorry, Mr. Hani. So clap twice means give me your test, clap three times. It means I'm not taking your tests. Oh my God, how mean you are. <laughs> okay, this is really nice. Thank you, Mr. Hani. I'm taking these ideas, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. So, scoreboard. Scoreboard is the most important part in whole brain teaching. If you want to teach whole brain teaching, it will not work without, without the scoreboard or the motivation chart or whatever you uh, you design in order to, uh, to uh, just uh, uh, reinforce your students in a positive way, okay? So scoreboard should be in every class. And it is very uh, uh, special way or a good for classroom management tool, okay? So it is fun to uh, interactive uh, to interactive method to keep track of how many points different teams or individuals in the classroom have earned and so on so you have to be careful especially when you want to apply challenging games it is really amazing if you just scored points for uh, the first uh, five who will answer first correctly or the first three or the group that will finish first answering the or doing the activity or doing this uh, part in a correct way will take the point this is very important to be done in our classrooms positive feedbacks are and uh, motivating our students is the is the best way to enhance uh, their uh, their skills their uh, their learning styles and at the same time their self-confidence okay and uh, by the way uh, 
you can also use the whiteboards, okay? Uh, for example, instead of uh, seeing all the whiteboards, but it is, you have to do this, but if you want, just you don't have time, you can you can ask your students to uh, make a challenging uh, a challenging game by, by for example, answering uh, on the mini whiteboard, the question or the thing that you are asking about. And when you, when they raise up the whiteboards, Okay, the first five who raise the first five who raise up their the whiteboards will be the winners or will take points on the motivation chart or the scoreboard. So challenges and solutions. Of course, I'm gonna go here. Of course, uh, whenever we want to apply such a strategy or such a technique, we will be facing a lot of challenges. But of course, for every challenge, there is a solution or there are suggestions that we can work on in order to uh, overcome these challenges. So we have the time management. Of course, you're gonna say that, uh, what about time? This is your creative way in managing um, uh, managing your time, the activities that you're going to be to apply inside our inside your classroom. You have to be careful for, uh, for the, the activity and the duration for each activity, assessments and evaluations. Also here, I already showed you just a very uh, uh, impressive example by assessing students' reading, for example. Adaptive, uh, adaptability, of course, as I said, adaptability is very important to take into consideration the four learning styles. Classroom management by using class yes, gestures, hands, okay? And of course, the classroom environment, okay? Uh, techniques, using management techniques. And the teacher training. The teachers should be all trained for this, uh, for this, uh, for applying such a strategy, in order to apply it in a, a very creative, organized way. Okay, so it will not uh, just waste her time, waste her content, or annoy other classes by being uh, by being uh, the, the by the students being so excited and active. Okay, I'll. Uh, Skip this. Teaching scenarios. So here it comes to uh, teaching scenarios. I have here three scenarios, okay? I want you to tell me what whole brain teaching strategy, strategy can you employ to foster a supportive learning environment? So think of, we have a class yes, we have mirroring, we have teach okay, call a response, we have hands and eyes, scoreboard. So these are different techniques in whole brain teaching. So please read each scenario and tell me which one belongs to one of the whole brain teaching. You can just uh, write the title, name the title of uh, the technique that we have discussed about. So take your time, read the scenarios. And I'm waiting for your uh, uh, participation. Important for recalling. Yes, Ms. Petro, that's right. And organizing ideas. Thank you, Flami. Thank you. So, Mr. Hani, maybe mirroring for the blue box. Okay. Restless students who are not paying. Okay. Imagine you're a teacher facing a classroom full of talkative and restless students who are not paying attention. Okay, how mirroring, can you tell us, please? Green box teach, okay, yes, exactly. Example, uh, imagine you're a teacher facing classroom full of talkative and restless students who are not paying attention. Yes. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe if I clap once, and I do this, you know? When I clap once, they directly copy me. When uh -huh. I clap, they, uh, I say clap twice and they directly do it. Then now they are all at, uh, attentive to me and they're just waiting to listen to what I'm going to be saying. Okay. Uh -huh. So like this, I'm going to maybe grab their attention. And as for the second one, storytelling, I wrote uh, the option is, uh, I don't know if I'm correct, teach okay. Okay. So it is, you are an English teacher, language class, and you want to engage your students in a storytelling activity. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Teach okay. What about the brown box? You have a class with the students of varying abilities and you want to encourage peer tutoring and collaboration. 
even here you can uh, do teach okay or um, call a response okay yes, okay i thought of teach okay yes yes Blue, a brown box uh, goes for teach okay and the green box okay uh, you can go it for it in mirroring by retelling the story by role playing it okay yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. And, what, did and you, the, what, what, what was your answer for the blue box? For the blue box, it is class, yes, or uh, oh, hands yeah. and eyes. Yes, yeah, yeah, because yeah. here we are trying to, uh, this is kind of classroom management. We are trying to grab the students' attention here again, so we can use such technique. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so uh, here we come to our conclusion. Uh, our exploration of teaching and learning styles shows us that everyone learns differently, as you see, that everyone learns in a different way. And of course, most of the teachers experience this by using various methods. We can make sure everyone gets the best education possible. So my recommendation, keep updating with all the new strategies. Try to engage all the students. Try your best to satisfy their learning styles. Try your best to just make them enjoy your session because you as well will enjoy entering the class to give your session in a really amazing and engaging way. Thank you all for this, uh, for the amazing participation. Thank you, Mr. Hani and Mr. Muhammad. Thank you, Ms. Maha, for again giving me this amazing chance to just share my knowledge and experience uh, worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Layal, for this uh, wonderful presentation. Really, it uh, was uh, amazing. So thanks Thank for all our uh, participants and audience. Thanks, Mr. Hani and uh, Mr. Muhammad, I say. Yes. And look forward just for uh, more uh, more training. Of course. You I would want? love to. And also an order. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.